Hello, this is Bobby with Madness Labs, and it's been all of five minutes since the last video. Um, last video, I uh, went over some installing the environment, getting the environment set up so that you can start building apps. So we went over how to install Node, how to install Git, and then how to install Visual Studio Code. So one of the big things uh, when you first start developing software is figuring out how to get that code from your computer to other computers um, or even out to web servers. So the way to do that, our preferred way, is to use Git. So Git, which we installed, is a um, distributed version control system. So basically, it's going to allow us to sync our code, and then other people can pull it down, and they can edit it, sync it back up. And what you're going to want is some place to store that online so that if you do jump to another machine, you can actually pull it down from this online repository. Um, the name of the, uh, the standard in, uh, in this is github.com. So if you don't already, go and get a GitHub account. Um, so I'm going to, oops, I'm going to sign out because I'm in the wrong account. Um, so if you don't have a GitHub already, pause the video, go sign up for one. It's pretty much a requirement nowadays. You have to have some kind of version control um, and we're not going to use that SVN crap. So, go ahead and sign up for a GitHub account and get into your account. So, the number one thing, or the first thing that you're going to want to do is let's go ahead and just create a repository. Let's create a new project that we're going to start. So, for instance, maybe you want to spin up a new portfolio. So, let's start a new repository. I'll create it under myself, call it Portfolio. Then I can give it a description. This is my portfolio. And if we wanted to, we could make it private, which means only uh, we will have access to it and be able to see it, and only people that we add as collaborators will be able to actually work on the code. Um, however, that does cost money. Um, the beauty of offering a free tool um, is, is basically they wanna make sure that you're contributing to the community of open source, and so it's free as long as you keep your project open for the public. So in this case, we're just gonna leave it public and create the repository. Awesome. So they give you right there some command line instructions that you can follow. That you can follow. Um, we don't actually have to use those. We can actually use VS Code to do most of this work for us, which is what I'm going to recommend and what I'm going to show you in this video. So now that we've got our portfolio set up, go ahead and copy the URL out of the browser bar. So this is the link to where the repository lives online. So now go ahead and pop open VS Code. And I'm already in an app, so I'm going to go up to help welcome. So you might see something like this on your first launch. Uh, if you don't, it's not required that you see this. Um, but basically, it'll give you a really easy way to get to this clone Git repository. You can also run Control shift p uh, And this will give you something called the command palette. So in VS Code, the command palette is a way to quickly run commands um, out of the program. So usually these are things that are accessible via the file menu, um, but we can quickly get to these things by using this command palette. So we're going to type in git clone, and we can do either git clone or we can click that little button on the startup screen. Again, multiple ways to do the same thing. So we're going to click enter. Now it's going to ask us for that repository URL. So now we just want to paste in the URL from GitHub. So in this case, it's my GitHub account forward slash portfolio. Now it's gonna ask us where on our computer we wanna store this application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to set it to sync to a folder that I have called apps, C apps. And then what it's gonna do is clone down the repository, store it on our computer, and now we can actually open up the repository with a click like that. Now I'm in my repository, so now this um, is actually stored on my computer and I can make changes, I can add files, I can do all that kind of stuff and then I can actually sync those changes online so that I can actually view them on other devices um, or eventually build, uh, send it through some kind of a um, automated service to actually build these things and push them out to a web server. Um, there's all kinds of neat stuff we can do. We're just going to show the process of how that works. So let's go ahead and make a new file. We'll just make a readme. So a readme file is really neat. It's basically just a text document. 
Um, but we can write markdown inside of here, which is like a, a way of writing um, kind of like formatted text. So like kind of like Word document stuff. So if I can do like a pound sign and that'll give me a really bold title. So I can say my portfolio. And then I can actually just type in some plain text. This is my portfolio. So now when I save that, what you're gonna notice is there's a little um, one that's right next to this get icon over here. And so what that's telling us is that there is one change that's on our computer that hasn't been committed. So it wants us to commit it basically. So we can click into there and that's gonna open up this pane. And it's gonna show you all the files that you've changed since the last commit. Since this is our first time pulling down the project, there's no commits. Um, so let's go ahead and make one. So let's make initial commit. So what this text box is, is it's basically just a note of what we've changed. So in this initial commit, I'm just wanting to say, hey, this is the first time I'm committing something um, and it's gonna contain this readme file. And then I can click this checkbox at the top. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna commit the changes locally on our computer. So now we're saying, cool, I've made these changes. I'm happy with them. I'm making the initial commit. We're good to go. And now what you're gonna see is this guy right here is actually going to uh, say publish changes. So we can now click that and then what's going to happen is it's going to ask us to pick the, the master. Um, and so origin should be the first option. Um, if you already had content in this GitHub repo, it would automatically figure all that out and it would already be set up. Um, but in this case, we're going to click origin. And ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. boom. So now it's actually taken our code and synced it to GitHub. So now if I throw this on the right, pull this up to the left, if I refresh here, now we'll be able to actually see initial commit by me, and there's the readme file, and we can see that GitHub does this really nice thing where they actually will render whatever's in the readme file, the markdown, and actually put it on the screen for us. So let's add a little bit more content so we can see that process again, because this is essential for actually doing development um, and, and iterating with your code. So let's go ahead and say, maybe we want to add another more small title. This is my work. And then maybe we want to put some kind of, you know, blood. Yes. So maybe I list out a list of projects that I've worked on. And now again, you're going to see that over here, there's one change, there's one file that's changed on our computer that it would like us to commit. So now we're going to say, add readme text or add maybe more specific so that we can look back on this and know what, what it's about. Add projects to readme. Now I can click the checkbox or a little shortcut is control enter and that will commit it. And now what you're gonna see is that this sync button at the bottom says that there is zero, zero commits that are waiting to be pulled down online, but there's one commit that's waiting to be synced from our computer to the online repository. So we're gonna go ahead and click that and the beauty of this button is that it runs a couple git commands and does all of this magic for us um, so that it's really, really streamlined and simple. We can just click this button. If there's any changes online and any changes on our computer, it's going to automatically pull them down, merge them together, push them back up and do all of that repetitive work for us. Um, note that sometimes there's merge conflicts and it'll have to, you'll have to actually learn how to uh, debug those. Um, we won't go into that in this video. I uh, just want to really drive home this concept of making changes, committing those changes, and then syncing them up to GitHub. So now you can see, I refresh the screen over here, we can see the newest commit, add projects to readme, and we can see the new content that I just pushed up. So just to really drive this home, again, Git creates a timeline of your code. So this right here is a timeline. We can see every different commit, and we can actually see what I've added and what I've changed as we move through this code over time. So you can see that in this commit is where I added all of these new lines. So this is an essential tool and this is just a real brief intro. There's a lot more stuff that we can do with it, but I think that's enough for uh, one little tiny bite-sized video. So go and try that out and then uh, we'll see you in the next video.